Hello guys and welcome back to another car show. I don't even know if I'm going to film here. Number one, I don't even know if I'm going to film because of the wind here. Bearing in mind I'm going up to the coast, it's probably going to be even worse. But this is such a lovely spot, uh, which I've took a few photographs of the car in before this gets cleared, as you can see with the hay bales and stuff. Uh, what it is, we're going up to Bamber Castle. I had no plans of even doing any of this. In fact, I was sitting feeling a bit sorry for, for the car uh, because I've never had the thing out to more than two shows this year. And as it happens, unknown to me, uh, obviously I don't have me, I don't have my son this weekend. My partner, this is, uh, her sister, is taking uh, Olivia to uh, a dog show, which, funny enough, we were at yesterday anyway. And she's at work, so I was like, hold on, I've got all day free to myself, but nothing really planned. So I just give Chris, my friend, a, a, a text, he says, yeah, there's a show up at Bamborough. Bamborough's near, quite, by, it's about an hour away from here, leisurely drive. Um, Bamborough Castle, somewhere near there, there's, funny enough, another dog fundraising and car show event on up there. So I thought, two and one, you all know, I love me dogs, and I love me cars. If I can raise some money for some put to put towards some rescue dogs, happy days. If I can get me car for the day on a, what looks to be absolutely going to be a beautiful day, win win. So I'm currently now um, going. I'm at a place called Stanton. I'll get to the car in a minute. Funny enough, there's a, a guy just around that corner who deals in old specialist Citroen stuff, town and country. You call them. He's called Robin. He, if he's seen me drive past in this, he would stop what he's doing and come straight out. He's got any, anything you need for an old, especially Peugeot, but as you know, Peugeot, Citroen, same thing. Town and country, Morpeth slash Stanerton. He's just up there. That's the main East Coast main line, top of that field. And if you've ever been on that, which you, a lot of you will have been, on the train, if you look at the Stanerton crossing, it's got, this is called Clifton Lane. Uh, you actually see his scrapyard because he actually lives in an old um, railway building. Anyways, enough of that. So I'm going to be driving now to uh, Annick, uh, to McDonald's. I'm going to stop there, get myself a breakfast, get a coffee, and then Chris, obviously, is travelling from Middlesbrough. He's going to meet us there. And we're going to drive the rest of the way to uh, Bamber Castle, somewhere thereabouts, at least anyways. Again, I'm not sure. So I'm going to review this when I'm in the McDonald's. I don't know what kind of film I, I can get. I've never been. I don't know if there's music going to be blasting. We shall see. But we'll spin it around to the important thing. This beautiful ZX, and I think it looks stunning. We'll just do a quick walk around and excuse the wind. Yeah, really does look fantastic in this set. I really am going to plan next year to do more shows. I am going to Beamish this year, and I'm doing one at Winyard on the 1st of October, depending on weather. Uh, but yeah, this car, I really should have used it more, but as you all know, I've been quite busy this year with camping, all the rest of it. Uh, so yeah just looking absolutely fantastic and i swear to god honestly i have not washed this car since last year it's just been in storage i've got it out of storage it's been out in the rain and the beauty with this matte colored white it doesn't show up any scratches any marks it's got a key mark along the side which i think i've told a lot of you about which is the main reason i got the car it's like you can probably just see it there if you look closely and if you stand back you cannot really see it can you so I love it, absolutely love it. I love the colour, I can put car covers over it and you don't need to worry about it getting scratched and stuff because, again, the bumper, it's got a little scrape on it there. Again, black bumper, doesn't bother us. It's a 30 odd year old car, uh, so yeah. But I don't think, a lot of you just keep asking, you haven't seen the interior of it, I apologise. Um, it's on a lot of my shows, when I've been at the shows and stuff, I don't tend to film my own car, it shows for some reason. Yeah, it's absolutely immaculate in there. See, it's got the sun blind. On the parcel shelf, that pulls up. Obviously, I've got a cover on the seat for when I'm uh, when I have it at work. But the driver's seat is absolutely immaculate. That's actually just a piece of fluff. But yeah, with it being the the, the advantage, it's a weird spec because you don't get power steering, you don't get colour coded bumpers, you don't get alloy wheels. And you get obviously a 1.4, I personally prefer the little TU3 1.4 injection massively over the diesel on these anyways, mainly because for what I use it for, it's the cheap tax, instead of it being 320, 330, I think it's something like 180, uh, so it's the cheaper tax ban, but it's all basic on the outside, with little 13 inch wheels, but as you see I've got all matching, good yeah, efficient grip, compact grip, all matching, so I'm a stick lad with that. 
and it really does drive great but the little tiny little one six five seventy thirteens i tell you what you don't need the power steering you really don't on this but when you get to the inside though things start to change electric windows genuine factory fitted remote sent lock into the little receiver up there you have probably seen from the outside yeah you get a sunroof but it's not just a normal sunroof it's an electric sunroof tilt and slide even get electric mirror you don't need all sitrons like this you can't reach across there so it's electric on the left manual on the right because that's just what you need you don't need that one to be because you can reach it rev counter some form of upgraded sound system uh, so yeah it's got all of the extras on the inside but you want remote central locking not just normal central locking remote central locking electric windows electric mirrors electric sunroof it's great absolutely great and she sounds sweet as you like crank's first time and as you see it's only got 53,000 mile on the button as you can hear that lovely TU3 pitter patter great great little engines but yeah enough talk now I'm going to get myself in the car and head my way up the Anik and stop at McDonald's get myself something to eat I think what time is it now let's just check the time quarter past nine I want to be there for just after half past Chris is coming for about half ten gives us an hour need to do a few I've got a video coming out tonight uh, on something else I did uh, Matt Furious driving did a walk round down at his fleet in Kent a few weeks ago I'll be don't know what I'm going to do actually I'll probably put that one up through the week and I might try and get this one all done tonight um, because I tend to find that I get more views on shows where they've just happened and people who couldn't make it for whatever reason want to do but this isn't like a big show like the Festival of the Exceptional so I don't think it would get the big hits anyway I'm just doing this for you guys giving you a quick walk around the ZX and we'll have a quick walk around the show when we get there depending on what it's like when I get to McDonald's I might do a quick walk around of mine and Chris's car I'll let you know I'll keep that as a secret which car he's bringing because it's a new one um, I'm going to go from there just see what happens if the show if I turn up to the show and there's too much music and that going on I might just do a quick walk around say hello it might not be much and move on but we shall see catch you soon right guys here we are Bamba Castle in the background I'll just give you a quick show of the car show over there Mainly old TVRs uh, and a lot of all that stuff I can't really tell you much about but as it happens there's been a bit of a development we've turned this into a bit of a road trip so I'll explain later when we get away from here but it's going to be a late night for me uh, we're up at Barnborough I've got to get home change cars drive down to Middlesbrough to Saltburn then turn around come all the way back again I'll tell you why what we're getting what's happening at some point along the way so i'm not really going to do much if any filament at the show i'm just going to quickly go around now and just show you uh chris's car uh the primera uh import primera state import next to next to the zx but that's pretty much it uh, and i'll resume when we get back mainly because it's too hot i can't be chewed the signal is non-existent so i won't be able to get nothing uploaded uh, in time and I don't really know much, if anything, about, I would say, 95% of the cars there. But we'll have a quick walk through in a second. Um, and then I'll cut it off and I'll join you somewhere where I'm going to explain what's happening. This is more going to be a car collection kit, a car swap. So it'll be three cars swapped all in one go. I'm getting a car. Chris is losing the car. And my friend Simon is gaining a car. I'll let you guess which ones they're going to be. But there'll be full updates on that. So I'm going to keep it short and sweet because there'll be quite a bit of video on, going on later. But we'll have a quick walk through the car show can't tell you much but come and join us just do a quick bit of recording as i walk in this old merc there range rovers old rover jag fiesta at the end there let's go convertible it's actually the first time i've walked around here as well so old volvo there mini old opal yeah but loads of tbrs yeah Alpha, Capri, E-Type, not that many cars, but, you know, nice little Suzuki there, a lot of huge American stuff, but yeah, that's nice Capri away there, 2.8 injection, these huge things, but that's been made off double zero garage, he's a nice lad, does a lot of uh, 
work around Ariane Bedlington. Yeah, huge. Convert. I can't tell you the name of them. But this is Chris's convertible. Uh, it's like a Primera, importable, as you'll see. The lights are all different. See side lights are within there. Different grill. And when you get inside, though, you've got your usual. All have it. Electric folding mirrors. Climate control. Automatic. Digital speedo converter because it's in kilometres, obviously. Aircon works on this one, an absolute treat. And supposedly it's two inches narrower than a UK one. But yet to measure it to find out. And it's got the 1800 engine in, which wasn't available in the UK. And that's just next to my little ZX. There's a lovely Fiesta RS next to it. We've been having a good look around that as well. So I shall catch you all later and explain what's going on. Hello, guys. And I apologise about a bit of a naff video here because the car show yesterday, like I mentioned, was there's only there wasn't that many cars there and I didn't know a great deal about them. But it ended off actually turning into a car collection caper times three. I was going to do some filming, but I didn't get home till after 10 o'clock last night. Well, probably touching nearly 11. And I've been on the go since first thing, as you know, in this field right here yesterday morning with the ZX. In the car show, I met with Chris and we got talking. As you, as you all know, there's three cars in particular in the mix at the minute. The XC90 that I used to own, which Chris used to own. The Audi A6 S-Line, 2.7 V6 diesel, which I used to own and Simon used to own. And the other Simon used to own. And then there's also the Mercedes C-Class, the C230 compressor, the one from what had spent 16 years in Spain that Chris owns and I used to own. So what happened anyways, me and Chris sat talking at the show, as you do, beautiful day like the day, and he's like, I mentioned, said Simon's having difficulty selling the A6, and basically he's getting fed up, as we all do, when you just think, is this car going to sell or not? And I know that that A6 is an absolute gem of a car. Simon knows that, the other Simon who owned it even longer again knows that. And I said to Chris, because obviously Simon did a deal, when I bought the Saab, Simon got me XC90 and he expected to sell the A6 and it would just sell straight away but the market seems to be very stale at the moment and nothing is moving at all. So basically Chris said, uh, uh, Simon actually come to us and he went, look Dan, I'm just going to sell the XC90, get you sorted and I'll just keep the A6. Chris heard wind of this and he said, I would love my XC90 back, especially after the work I did to it. I was like, hmm. Let's think here. And then Chris said, well, you know, I've just bought this, as you see at the show, that imported Primera estate, which he uses all the time. He's got, you know, he says, do you know what? He says, I think I probably have to sell the C-Class because I'm not using it enough. Simon, on the other hand, I knew, loved that C-Class. So I thought, let's think of a deal here, how we can do this. So Chris wanted his XC90 back. Simon would happily do a deal with the C230 compressor. And to be quite honest, I wouldn't mind me A6 back. ML's off the road, ZX will be going off the road very soon. I've only got the Golf, and I do fancy a bit of a long distance cruiser. Nothing wrong with the Golf for cruising, but it lacks cruise control, the heated seats, all that, and you know the A6 is nice. So I thought, yeah, we'll go, all round deal. I'm not gonna get into the, uh, like I don't talk about money on this channel, so don't ask. Um, so we've done a deal, anyways. Simon gets the Mercedes C230, Chris gets the XC90, and what do I get? Yeah, got me A6 back, and I absolutely love this car. Absolutely love it. So, we'll do a quick walk around of it, and I'll explain what happened last night. But this thing, as you can hear, purring away there. I don't know how it sounds on camera, but that V6 TDI is beautiful. This being an 06 plate one, it doesn't have a DPF on it. Happy days. It's been remapped the 230 or 40 brake horsepower. But remember, with diesels, you don't look at those figures. It's the torque of that turbocharged V6 diesel. It is unreal. It is beautiful. So, yeah. So, again, a car that I've always wanted back. Yes, it's not an estate, but I've got me Golf, which costs us peanuts anyway. So, I've got an estate car if I need it. And I've got this for doing a bit longer journeys. And before you say anything... This has got the biggest boot I've ever seen of any car in a long time. This pram will not fit in even long ways, pushing it in some lo uh, Mondeo estates I've got, and it fits in long ways in here. A massive, massive boot. Simon, who used to own it, not the Simon who got the XA90, Simon originally who used to own this, 
I used to fit a whole mobile DJ kit in there. Speakers, all the shebang, the lot. And again, those exhausts. I, I haven't debadged it. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of debadging, but I think it does make the back end of this look quite nice. And those, as a few people have mentioned, those beautiful tailpipes. I don't know if you can hear this on, on camera or not. Let's just uh, hold the phone next to it. That. I, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it. You've got a subwoofer system in your house, that low kind of pulsing of that v oh, it just sounds so good at the back end when it's running this car but like i said it's been remapped it's got no dpf it's a standard cat that's still fitted um and the egr deleted and i'm telling you out of all the cars i've had that's been remapped the altia the astra few other ones who as you've seen who are gm do uh this this one has took the best to the remap it's a completely different car I think the, what, this is the BPP 180 brake and it's a detuned version. I think there's a higher spec and it was a bit like the Saab that I had. It was like probably like factory 200 and something brake anyways, but they just detuned them to 180. Um, and like I said, different car. And it's not like, it's, it's hard to explain. The Golf is very, very low down and torquey, but this has just got a massive torque band. And to be honest, you don't you hardly need to change gear in it. But again, the big importance with this A6 is it's manual. And yeah, yeah, we all know. Just to go on, on a, few, a few people have asked, what's the issue with it, Dan? I bought this car with 90 something thousand mile with Simon years ago. And it's now got 179,000 mile. Just show you on the dash. And it developed a little issue where when you go around a corner at a slow speed in second gear, it pops itself out of gear. It doesn't grind, it doesn't crunch, it just pops out. And for years and years and years, it's just been lived with like that. Simon lived with it, the other Simon lived with it. I've been all over the place in it. You learn to go around a corner in first, third, big V6 diesel, you can, or just hold the gear stick in the second position. There is an engine, an electronic engine mount fault on it. I might change that out one day, but it just doesn't bother us. The car just drives so good, it's never bothered with. So yeah, I've got this back. Just a quick look inside. I thought I saw, I'm not gonna go on too long on this video, but again, we've all seen this car a few times. I'm all, I, I absolutely love these S-Line seats. It's got all the sat-nav, cruise control, aircon, like the heated seats, aircon, I do need to look at. Automatic lights, winter pack headlamp washers. I would say, shall we have a headlamp washer moment? Oh, sod it. We'll have a headlamp washer moment. Put the lights on. Route the phone. See if we can catch it. I don't know if I can catch it or not in time. Let's see if we can. There we go. How sad am I? <laughs> Got to have a headlamp washer moment. I don't know. I don't know why I'm so sad with that, but yeah. And they both work as well. I've seen two nicely cleaned headlamps. So the same. Yeah, so anyways, what happened? Sitting at Bamberg Castle, we decided that was the deal we're going to do. So I rang Simon. Simon was like, yeah, when you get back from the show about six o'clock, I'll come out to yours in the XC90. We shall drive to Middlesbrough, leave the XC90 with Chris and drive the C230 back. I was part of the deal, so I had to come. Um, and the A6 was already parked around the corner from my house. I just simply took the keys off Simon, sorted everything out. So what do you think, guys? I think it's quite a nice little combo that I've got going on. The Golf, the A6, if a similar year, 06, 05. And all the other stuff, the ZX, the ML, all that's gone off the road. So, yeah, all one's fair swoop. And I don't feel too bad because Simon was getting himself a little bit upset and worked up about kind of not the A6 not selling, which he thought it would, and I did as well. And you, you, you all know we don't like loan people money. Uh, Chris is happy with his car happy days so i'm quite pleased it's worked out well for everybody simon absolutely loves that c-class driving it back i know chris likes the xc90 and we all know what i think of that car so we'll leave it there sorry i didn't get any filming in last night it was just like i said it was such a rush got like, i didn't even get turned around at home Simon was picking us up it was dark by the time we got to middlesbrough there wasn't much to film so we'll leave it there i hope you enjoyed it i know it was a very quick walk around the show i don't even think it's going to be classed as a car show video i'm just going to class it as a an update car caper car car collection car swapping whatever i haven't got a clue what i'm even going to name it i haven't washed it back if it's rubbish i'm going to delete it all uh so we'll see it's just so i can put some content out out there for you guys 
this is about as much car content as I've got going on at the minute. <laughs> Hectic like life is normal. Well, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. There has been a few people, I think Pylight or somebody, sent us a £5 um, donation the other day. Much appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, you know how much I appreciate all of you across the board, all my regulars. Uh, Kit, you're often uh, helping us out. And there's a lot of other Fiesta Man. Uh, oh, there's, there's loads, loads of people, loads of like the, the regulars, you all know who you are. Don't I do not need to go through you one by one because you all know who you are. Uh, massively appreciate your time. Massively appreciate your support. So thank you all for watching. Please, I know everybody gets sick of hearing this, but if you haven't done so, please help us out a great deal. Hit the like, hit the subscribe. If you haven't got an account, it takes two minutes to sign up. It doesn't affect money or nothing like that. Free of charge. Sign up. Hit the subscribe and leave a comment. It all helps. I know I take a little while to get back to these, but. It, it does kind of take a bit of time to get through. And if you do want a little bit more interaction with us one-to-one, -one, go onto my Facebook page, uh, Car at a Garage Northeast. But remember, there's no payment on there. That's all in my own free time. Um, I don't get anything out of that, but I just do that to, pr to provide a little bit of extra, um, well, content, I suppose, to the channel. That is quite a lot goes on there, which clearly doesn't go out on video. So I'll catch you soon. Thanks for watching.